Anime figures can be really, really expensive these days. Whether you're new to collecting or have been around for at least a few years, the state of the hobby is one that demands you empty your wallet out every time you even think about buying new figures. And man, doesn't that suck? I don't want to be poor, I just want to feed my addiction of adding nice things to my shelves. So what can we do about this? Well, when it comes to new figures outside of like prize figures and notable companies like Koto Bukia and Mythios sometimes, absolutely nothing. But fret not, because I have a secret for you. Figures have been around for a long time. Yeah, I know. And the best part is, Figures were a lot cheaper back then, and the demand doesn't always go up for them. In fact, a lot of the time they go down, so you know what that means. That's right, better prices, more deals to be found, and less regret when you make those figure purchases. So that's what we're here to talk about today. Scale figures that you could find for relatively low prices, around $100 or less, almost all less in my examples. No Nendoroids, no Figma, no prize figures, just strictly scale figures and ones that are in my collection so that I can personally show them off to you guys. Let's get started. First up is a figure that to this day remains one of the most popular figures on MFC, Momohime from Muramasa the Demon Blade. Originally released on the Wii and eventually ported and enhanced with the Vita port, which remains its resting place thanks to Atlas, I'm definitely not bitter about that choice, Muramasa is all about the flashy side-scrolling combat enhanced by the beauty of VanillaWare's unique art style you won't find anywhere else. And Momohime just so happens to be one of the two playable characters. Now, what about Kisuke? Yeah, no, we don't have time for male leads as collectible memorabilia. Make way for some sexy Kitsune and a cat girl instead. All excellent figures, but ones I don't own, unfortunately. Momohime honestly deserves all the praise and attention she gets, retailing for about 7,800 yen and can be found for around the same price as these days used. She's worth every yen. What I've always loved about this figure's design was the mix of two separate worlds. The life of a beautiful Japanese princess in a kimono, and a hardened samurai wearing armor. Somehow this not only doesn't look stupid, but in fact works so perfectly that I'd love to see it more often. The armor pieces are used sparingly along her shoulders, forearms, and backside, leaving the rest of her design to focus on the beauty of her kimono decorated with flowers. A very short kimono, mind you, which shows off her wonderful thighs and of course her butt, thanks to the rippling of the cloth. We're also dealing with absolutely wonderful colors all throughout this figure. The kimono is a pinkish orange that transitions to yellow along her sleeves. The sash around her waist that's tied into a ribbon on her back is a bright turquoise, and the armor pieces are a combination of black and purple, which can also be found on her thigh highs and socks. The rough and beaten up texture of the armor pieces lined with a metallic silver paint just adds a bit of character to this figure. As if to say the armor's not just for show, she's been using them to protect her life. I just love the color scheme, and of course, it's all painted and shaded really nicely thanks to Alter's quality control. And if you haven't been one over yet, we've still got her face to talk about. Her big orange eyes, long thick eyelashes, slightly pursed lips, and that hair, slightly messy in appearance, and decorated with a cushy comb and big flowers on both sides. She may be a beautiful princess, but she's got business to take care of first. And how else will she take care of business but with her Muramasa blade? Alter's given us a few ways to display Momohime via optional arm parts. Between having the blade already in hand or having it emerging from the sheath, ready to be swung. Another great aspect of this figure, the base. It's a small rock formation with rushing water splashing between the rocks, and the sculpting is great for sure. But one thing that you'll really come to appreciate as your collection grows are figures that respect your shelf space. So not only is this a step up from the traditional flat base disc that places Momohime into the world of Muramasa, but it also won't be hard to find a place to actually display her. Fun fact, there's actually two different releases of Momohime, the original which I own and the re-release which gave her a new paint job, aiming to be a bit more refined and accurate to the source material. A bit hard for me to fully compare without owning both, but from the photos I do think a lot of the new paint applications are richer in the re-release. But the red hue that permeates throughout her skin tone is a bit strange when you focus on her face. Her slightly red eyes sort of make it look like she's either really tired or maybe even stoned, but I think no matter which version you end up going with, you'll be extremely happy with her in your collection. It's a very detailed figure, bursting with colors, and at its price point, it's hard to pass up and in my opinion would even make a great starting point for people just getting into collecting figures. Our next figure is one that never saw the popularity that the quality would imply she'd get, Hacker from 7th Dragon 2020. And there's a few reasons for this, I believe. One, well, how many people can actually say they've played 7th Dragon 2020? Wasn't exactly the most popular game out there, even back during its release, which could have led to her becoming rare. But Hacker was released after Samurai, a figure which has dropped in price over the years, but during her initial release was a very popular pick among collectors. Max Factory likely saw her popularity and figured they couldn't go wrong with making ample supply for Hacker, but if that were the case, she wouldn't be in this video. 
What makes this figure stand out compared to the rest of the figures in this video is the art style. Original character designer and artist Mirashiro's strikingly stylized visuals have a unique flair that are like no other, and Max Factory faithfully captures his art perfectly. Her legs are extremely long and slender, those massive spiraling twin tails that reach all the way to her knees and end with intensely sharp points, and those eyes, that expression of complete disinterest in the world around her and the job that she's doing, it all points to being a Mirashiro design. Hacker's outfit is essentially gothic Lolita, a style I'm not usually fond of, but I've got nothing but praise for it here. Her dress is rather short with a second frilly layer underneath and stockings should you look further, which features dark stripes that run down her legs. The sculpting of her dress is just excellent, and the mix of dark and bright purples are aesthetically pleasing and work extremely well with her blonde hair. Her top is decorated with plenty of frills to go around, star-like decals along her sleeves and waist, and straps with silver dangly bits to keep it all in place. One of the more interesting aspects of this figure lies in the way her hair was painted. While it's a traditional shade of blonde on the top of her head, the twin tails are a darker shade with a bit of a graininess to it, almost as if you're looking at her through some sort of filter. There's quite a lot of shading on these twin tails, so it might be a bit surprising at first sight, but this was an intentional choice to closely match the original art. Other key features that I adore on this figure are her overly frilly sleeves, her tiny silver crown and blue bow ties that rest on her head, and of course her giant eared rabbit plushie that I've yet to talk about. Hopefully this is a plushie, I have no idea since I've never played the game, but either way he's just being dragged along by the ears, even being stepped on, but at least he's dressed nicely in his own little outfit. I can't decide if this plushie is either cute or creepy. I mean, if it is creepy, it's just barely so, but the cross-stitched eyes and the way its head is being dragged along really make these two feel like a perfect match for each other. Of all of my figures in this video, I believe Hacker will be the most decisive, and that's okay. It's not a figure that will appeal to everybody, nor should it be. Art is subjective after all. But if you're looking to add some high-quality flair to your collection, anything by Mirashiro is gonna stand out, and Hacker is no exception. She just has a presence that a lot of other figures don't. Partially due to her giant hair sculpt that makes her the width of two or even three figures, partially because of her outfit's design and how well all of her frills and clothing creases are sculpted into it, and of course partially due to the damn rabbit being dragged along for the ride. Ride. Hacker retailed for around 9,300 yen and can usually be found for anywhere between 7,500 and 10,000 yen depending on the condition, with plenty of people always trying to sell her on websites like My Figure Collection. If there's one thing that'll never die out in Japan, it's idol girls. You've got traditional idols, high school idols, horse girl idols, and even virtual idols. It's an ever-evolving industry with plenty of fans ready to choose their favorite flavor of escapism. But the nature of idols is a fickle thing. What's popular now may be old news tomorrow, and while that could be true for just about anything, I've yet to see a more radical shift between who's under the spotlight and who's already forgotten more so than with Idol Girls. But as a figure collector, that can be to your benefit. Case in point, Love Live. The Love Live sweep that overtook Japan back during its peak popularity is an era that not only do I vividly remember, but I was also a part of. Marketing was everywhere, not only in stores and online retailers, but all over buildings and restaurants, you name it. And figure companies were quick to respond. Of course, every girl in the original Love Live cast had to get figures. We had Nendoroids, we had Figma. I could even talk about how Stronger's line of figures can easily be found for under 5,000 yen at like any time of the day. But the most popular line and the one you'll likely want was Alters. Today I have for you Nico Yazawa, but most figures in this line can be found for under 100 with some exceptions. Definitely not picking up Maki for cheap, that's for sure. She's just way too popular. The fun thing about this line of idol figures is that Alter chose specific costumes for each girl to wear, so every figure has its own personality and charm. Nico is dressed head to toe in ribbons, from her stockings to her dress and top, every inch of this figure is a gift waiting to be unwrapped. While not specifically classified, this could also be seen as a Christmas figure. The candy cane stockings along with the primarily red, white, and green colors really do give that impression of the holidays. But I wouldn't mind receiving this on any day of the year because this is just adorable. And it really surprises me just how inexpensive she is considering Nico's popularity and meme status. But I guess memes just aren't enough to control the market. The first time I unboxed her, I was really impressed at her ribbon sculpting. For instance, the one that wraps all the way around her leg, ever so slightly not sticking to her legs, but sliding along them in motion with her movement. God, that is some fine craftsmanship, and you're gonna find that everywhere. The big ribbon along her chest, the ones that are wrapped around her arms, the huge red and gold bow tie around her back, and even the one tied to her neck. There's just so much natural flowing energy to this figure, and each ribbon being completely different in its sculpting and painting is marvelous. I mean, even her frickin' hair looks like party popper strings are emerging from under the hat, which by the way is magnetic to keep it in place. 
Also looks like a present. Also looks really good. And I haven't even commented on her black skirt and top, which are beautifully decorated with gold stars and trim. And then there's a clear plastic layer just underneath. The color scheme is just next level on this figure, and her face is just precious. As a bonus, you also get an optional arm if you'd like to have her left arm doing the Nico Nico knee pose, but you'll have to forego the hat, which I think isn't worth it. Still cute regardless of which route you take though. Look, I just think this one is a steal at her current price of around 10,000 yen, with her original price being close to 16,000 at retail. That's quite a decrease in price over the years. Everything about her is top-notch quality, and an easy recommendation for anyone who likes idol girls, cute girls, or just nice figures in general. I don't even care if you like Love Alive, this figure is good enough regardless of the source material. Our penultimate figure brings us back to 2011, and one I personally picked up in Japan in 2013 while on vacation there, and that's Azusa Nakano from k -On. I've always been surprised at how cheap this one has remained over the years considering its uniqueness, but while this one will likely take you the longest to hunt down, I promise you that when she does pop up it can be for very cheap. Unfortunately, I don't have a screenshot to show you the current price, because once it's not in stock, it becomes very hard to find the accurate aftermarket value. But if these relatively recent comments are anything to go by, then the deals are still out there, even when compared to her originally low price of 8,000 yen. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if most Kaon figures have dropped in value over the years as it's become less relevant, but this has always been one of my favorite figures from the series, and it all comes down to the strawberry theming. Not only is Azusa sitting on top of a giant strawberry with a glossy finish, but she's also got a tiny strawberry in her hand that's really well sculpted and painted for its size. How often do you see figures with fruit theming anyway? The shiny appearance of the strawberry always catches your eye no matter the distance, and the seeds placed throughout it do a good job of completing the look of the fruit. The strawberry is also placed on top of some cream from a cake, though it does sort of just look like a puddle of milk, but either way, helps out the stability. Her outfit comes straight from the ending of Season 2, a mix of a red and white polka dot shirt, black skirt, bright blue tights, and Converse shoes. Very cute outfit, and I've always loved the mix of red and blue on this figure. The blue tights were initially one of the reasons that made this figure catch my eyes in the shop. I remember picking this one up in Jungle if you've ever shopped there online, but anyway, this figure really is just a treat at its price. Azusa's face is extremely show accurate, and her smile is simply adorable. Rather than being in twin tails, her hair is tied up in a singular side tail, which I much prefer. The paint job is simple, without too much shading, which is normally a downside, and there's a few small paint flaws if you focus on the polka dots of her shirt, but at its price point, the execution is still excellent, and the mixture of matte and glossy finishes are balanced well throughout this figure. And so this section could end right here, but actually there's a gimmick to this figure that is so unnecessary, yet so cool and unique. I've kept this one detail out of sight until now so I could reveal the secret of this figure. On the backside of the strawberry is a little opening with a diorama of Mio sitting on a strawberry herself, ready to try the strawberry cake, which is also from the same ending song. Now, I said it's unnecessary because it's very likely you won't get to appreciate this detail much as it's on the back of the figure, but what a neat little surprise it is to turn this figure around and find a miniature diorama inside. And best of all, it lights up. Yeah, this figure has a light up feature. But just take my word for it, I don't have the batteries needed for this at the time of filming, but they really wanted to make sure this was special, and I think they succeeded. This figure is all about the theming and the commitment to it. Even the box Azusa comes in is designed to look like a cake box. While not the most stunning figure you'll ever find out there, this one just proves that a solid idea executed well can go a long way in making something great. We're returning to Vanillaware and Alter with this last entry, and a figure that just hovers around the $100 mark should you be smart about when you pick her up. Which is close to her original price of 10,800 yen, though her box is a little big, so shipping might be kinda high, but I can't control shipping prices, so... Anyway, let's talk about Odin Sphere. Might just be Vanillaware's most recognized IP, considering just how many figures this series has gotten compared to the rest of Vanillaware's catalog, but if you're familiar with this franchise, then you'd know that 80% of the figures go to Gwendolyn. And you know, Gwen could have been featured in this video. I happen to own the original altar figure, and her price does fall under the $100 threshold. But I've always been a bit salty towards this one due to her cheap plastic pegs snapping the day I bought her. Call it ignorance, call it carelessness, call it whatever you want, but now she remains super glued to her base for all of eternity. Plus, I just think better Gwendolyn figures have been released since this one, so instead I'd like to put your attention towards Mercedes the Fairy. Now, Mercedes has a few figures to choose from herself, but this one by Alter has always been her best in my opinion. It came out all the way back in 2010, and while it did get re-released a few times, it really does surprise me how little of an attempt there was to overthrow this one. But Alter really just hit it out of the park here. 
Right off the bat, Mercedes is suspended in midair thanks to the clever positioning of a rather lengthy crossbow she fights with. It's a weapon almost as big as her, but surprisingly doesn't take away focus from her beauty. Having this setup gives her a really natural sense of flight without the need for extra support rods or pegs, allowing your brain not to think twice about her pose. The crossbow gives the impression that it's quite heavy, which is controlling how she has to move around with it. While there's many details to go over on this one, my eyes have always gone to one place first, her legs. Her fair skin complexion really just pops out at you when against the natural colors and tones of the forest setting she's displayed in. And thanks to the rather short cutoff of her outfit, they kinda just go on for miles. And it's all capped off with her slightly pearlescent slippers. Her outfit is reminiscent of a puffy leotard made out of leaves and likely other plant life found in the forest. She also dons a nice looking wreath made out of flowers and her blonde hair is tied up in two cute braids. As for more fairy-like traits, of course she has big ol' pointy ears, mesmerizing red eyes, and another big focus point of this figure, her wings, which almost have a stained glass appearance to them. Aqua blue on the inside with a slightly glossy black paint creating the outline and shape, and it just looks fantastic. But really, it's not truly complete until we talk about this base. I mean, for 2010, this just looks phenomenal. It's a little slice from the game captured and immortalized into a figure. The clear blue water from the pond, the small lotus flowers drifting along the surface, the bright green lily pads being hopped across by our friendly frog friend who may or may not be an important character from the game, which by the way, maybe you should play it if you haven't, I highly recommend it. And then there's a whole ton of lush plant life that keeps Mercedes suspended in the air, along with the crossbow of course. There's a lot of individual pieces to this figure that had a ton of love and care put into them. Each section of this figure deserves to be appreciated. The plants, the wildlife, the crossbow, and of course, Mercedes herself. The colors are vibrant, the details are excellently sculpted, and the story this figure tells is one to remember. Throughout this video, I showed you guys some examples of affordable figures that I currently have in my possession, many of which I adore. But keep in mind that these are just a few examples of figures you could find out there at great prices. The secondhand market is full of them, and if you didn't see anything in this video that was up your alley, I almost guarantee you'll be able to find one that is. Explore secondhand websites like AmiAmi's pre-owned section, Mandarake, Jungle, MFC's ad page, or wherever else you can think of. It might be an expensive hobby, but it doesn't always have to be. Know any affordable figures that you think should be in my or other people's collections? Let me know down in the comments below, and if you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching, take care, good luck on the hunt if you decide to go find some anime figures, and until next time, I'll see you later. Bye.